That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Eclectica. I'm Michael Michael, aka Seven. We have our man Dean, the Mean Machine, <laughs> and we have a special guest, Dean. Please, please do the honor. Oh, what can you say about this man? Member of the Society of Illustrators. His comic book style illustrations are used in both. Uh, you'll see in um, editorial and advertising markets. Uh, his ads, I've seen it uh, for the Three, Musk Three Musketeer candy bar, my favorite candy bar. Uh, a Trojan Man, my favorite, never mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> author and designer. That's, that's not how you got your daughter. <laughs> uh, author and designer of coffee table art books, the, the Visions from the Twilight Zone, Neil Adams' Sketchbook. I have a copy of that my own right here. Great book. And the Silver Age of Comic Book Art, in which, there it is, in 2003, uh, he won the Independent Book Publishing Award for Best Popular Culture Book. Is that right? Yep. That is an award. We have an award-winning person here. He also lectured across the country, I think, since 1988. Yep. Uh, he's on Twitter, Facebook. He's got a couple of great <laughs> Facebook pages I'm happy to be a part of, and you can also find them on YouTube. A lot of, I think, I think I saw like 40 oh, yeah. YouTubes. Yeah. Entertaining and very informative. I mean, you can spend hours listening to this man. Uh, he's been on ABC 2020. Uh, the clip is on his website, arlenschumer.com. He's been called the... He's an expert, really, on American pop culture, the Twilight Zone, and even the music of Bruce Springsteen. Tomorrow is his birthday, so don't take the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> <laughs> he has... Uh, yeah, you got to say the name. Design. It can, this goes on. Say the name. Say the <laughs> name. <laughs> it's apprentice under the legend, Neil Adams, man. Oh, my God. How can yeah. you... Oh man, he is I, the son. I put it up. I put it up. You take it too long. I put it up. Mr. Alex Schumer. I said his name when I said the website. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Arlen, oh, for I'm joining us today. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here, sir. So happy to have you here. Um, all right, so let's get into the 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 book. Why 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 did you do the book? Well. You know, I grew up loving comics. I learned how to draw from comics, like a whole generation did. And I think when you fall in love with an art form, like rock and roll or movies, I think you tend to get into the history. So I think when you, you know, the history of comics is as rich and as deep as the history of movies or television, any 20th century art form, it's filled with as much triumph and tragedy as those art forms. So as I got interested in the history of comics, there really was never a book about two things, not only about the art of comic book art, most history books were text heavy with little reproductions of the art. And I think it's primarily a visual medium. When you look at a comic book, you fall in love with the artwork first. You, you then read the story and all history books they were never really about the artwork. And then on top of it, most history books were about the golden age of comics, which was the 1940s when comics started. I grew up in the Silver Age, the 1960s, when I think the art form really matured. And all the greats like Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, Carmen Infantino, Gil Kane, the list goes on, they all reached their mature styles in the 1960s. And yet there was never a book about that era. So I wanted to do the first real coffee table book that was not only about the artwork that reversed the paradigm so that the text would be supplementary and the images would be big and that it would also be about the Silver Age, which there really wasn't. So it took me many, many years, but when I finally got it published in 2003, I, I hate to say it, I was a little ahead of my time in the sense that the book came out before Facebook. It came out before all the, the movies hit, which are all based out of the Silver Age. Captain America, Thor, The Avengers, Spider-Man, they all come out of really the 60s. And 
therefore, you know, my book was with a small publisher, a mom and pop in Oregon. And then a year after it came out, they went belly up. So my book went out of print very quickly. And I never felt it reach the audience. But what's happened in the intervening 10 years is that not only has Facebook and social media sprung up, where now you can reach the audience that I never even knew I had. But there's an audience out there are thirsty for this stuff. And I think if you look at the material that's been published the last 10 years in terms of comic history, I mean, the hardcover books, these IDW artist editions. You know, when I was a kid, it's, it's ironic that during the Silver Age, the comics were great, but we had none of these hardcover archival reproductions. You know, I grew up reading Peanuts in those paperback books. But nowadays, if you want to go read Peanuts, there are these incredible, beautifully designed hardcovers of the entire Peanuts collections. So we would have died for stuff like that when I was a kid. What we're living in today is a golden age. Maybe the current comics aren't that great, but we're in a golden age, pun intended, of these archival reprints and these hardcovers. I mean, if you want to read Little Nemo in Slumberland or Flash Gordon, the golden age of the comic strip, they've got books now that are published actual size of the original comic strip. So I think for my book to now come back into print, in the climate we are now, where I can reach the audience that's receptive to it. And also 10 years ago, you know, guys who are 10, 11, 12 years old, they're now in their early 20s. And I think I can reach them and they would be interested in my book, whereas before I never could. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. I mean, I have a big extension of, of, of books and uh, it, you're right. It's heavily text. And what I saw from your book, and Mike, you got to see his book, I, did you, like, restore the color? Because it is so vibrant. I mean, I, I, I look at some of the pictures, I was like, I've seen this in another book, and it's, like, grayer, it's softer. But yeah, yours is, absolutely. like, bursting a color. And, and I, that, um, I think you also have, a, um, an, an, like, a... Uh, uh, online version of the book? Uh, uh, a, there will be an ebook, which I'm very excited book. about. And that was so cool. It, it was like just bursting off the screen. They leap off the screen, yeah. It is incredible, you know. I mean, this book is... Everyone's got like... I mean, I have like the Kirby book here, and I got a lot of Neil Adam books and whatever. But I'm telling you right now, his book is going to be on everyone's shelf. Yeah, I mean, if I hold his it up. His book is amazing. Well, I think what people are going to like about it is that in a lot of places, I take out the original dialogue in the word balloons, and I put in the artist talking about the art so that you read my book like a giant comic book, but it's a history book, and it's also an art book because you're reading what the artist has to say about the artwork. I act as more of a curator. I'm there. I introduce the chapters. I take you through the book as a graphic designer, but it's, I'm really showing the artwork and the artist's own words about the art. And trust me, I've got every book about comics in my collection. <laughs> I can say this honestly, there is no other book like my book. And that's what was always frustrating these last 10 years, that people would be talking about books about comics and my book could never enter the conversation because it was out of print. How do you compare today's comics to those? Well, you know, I said before, I don't think the current Marvel and DC comics are that great. They're, to me, they're a little bit bland. I mean, they're beautifully printed. The art itself is very well done, but there's a kind of a bland sameness to a lot of the art. When you look at the guys in my book, each artist has a distinctive style and these artists are the forefathers of today's artists like so when you name guys like jim lee you know he grew up praying to the altar of jack kirby and jack kirby's descendants john byrne who prayed at the jack kirby altar so every artist is distinctive whereas i think now at least for the marvel and dc mainstream product 
it's a little bit kind of blanderized. The really great comics, even though I come out of a superhero background, they're really more the independent comics. The guys like Charles Burns, Daniel Klaus, Chris Ware, they don't really do superheroes, but they are the great individual, great artists of our time.